Hello my friends and welcome to another review of a vintage uh, fountain pen. This time it's a special special fountain pen from the 1950s and we are talking about the model Mont Blanc 342 a beautiful beautiful classic Mont Blanc from the 1950s I must tell you first the price of this fountain pen of course I bought it uh, second hand because uh, this is a quite quite uh, old fountain pen you can see it is um, personalized with the name of uh, its original owner Hedvig Spalis. Some of uh, the collectors of fountain pens don't like the fact that uh, the fountain pens come with the name of the original owner. But this isn't my opinion. The name of the owner is present on the fountain pen because maybe if I am lucky and um, do an internet research, I can find out more about the history of this uh, beautiful piece. Maybe it was owned by a famous doctor or maybe it was owned by a successful lawyer. And for me, each of my vintage fountain pens that have a story, they have additional value from my point of view. Okay, so I bought this fountain pen and I paid for it only 460 lei, which means that I paid 94.58 euros or 110.81 American dollars. So for around 95 euros or for only 110 dollars, I got this, this classic beauty. Let me tell you something about this fountain pen. So this fountain pen, it came to me with a bonus. And first bonus. Let me uh, show you the logo on the cap. At first glance, it is an ordinary logo. As you can see, let's give it a zoom. But it is not. It has developed this patina, which is specific only to the Mont Blanc models of the 1950s, that had this particular white star uh, done in a material called casein and that material casein in time it develops this brownish or ivory patina <clears throat> and let me show you what i'm talking about here i have a meisterstuck 144 from 1983 and look it is in perfect white the logo of course, the logo of the, the model 342, initially it was also bright white, but in time it developed this patina. And I must tell you, this uh, ivory patina, it is a bonus for me, because I want all my Mont Blancs from the 1950s to have this distinguished look of the logo. And another bonus that it was quite expected because I didn't see it on the picture. Look at this feed. This is called the slope feed because it is quite um, thick, as you can see. It is an ebonite feed, but it is specific mostly to the 1940s and it is present on some uh, early models from the 1950s of uh, fountain pens. And for me, there's two elements. So, the ivory logo and the ski slope feed make all the money. So if you have these two traits on your Mont Blanc vintage from the 1950s, you have a treasure and I suggest that you hold on to it because in time the value would increase. Let me tell you about this model. So in a previous video, where I shown you this model, so the 200 and 254. I told you that in the 1950s, there were three classes, main classes or three series of fountain pens launched by Mont Blanc. So the first one, it is this famous, famous Meisterstück 
line. And I have for here in this uh, leather etui quite a special, quite a special Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146. And interesting, it is named Masterpiece and not Meisterstück because this was intended for the export market. So this was the first line, Meisterstück, which uh, means um, um, best crafted fountain pens. So those were the most expensive fountain pens. The first line of fountain pens. The second line of fountain pens, they were the so-called Series 2. So one of them is 254. And the third one, which were the um, lowest priced one, the Series 3. I've done also a video where I talked about the prices from a 1955 catalog of uh, those products. Of course, the 146, it is the most expensive one. And then it was the um, uh, Series 2 and Series 3. The Series 3 was intended for school use for uh, scholars or students. And this came before the Monterosa model. And the first variant of this particular 342 was called 3 uh, 42. And that, uh, that was a model, quite an interesting model, quite similar to this model, but it had this ink window exposed, like you see here. And in this way, you could tell if it had ink in it or not without removing the cap. But the newer models, like this model, had a screwed in cap and the ink uh, window was covered. Also, this example that I have in my hand, it is an early model. And why do I say that? Of course, the early models didn't have uh, this uh, white uh, logo. It was um, surrounded by a white line and I will show you, I will uh, leave a picture on the screen for you to see. And there was even a variant that had this domed in a blue color. Our model. It is a, an early model that came with this logo and the combination of the logo and this feed. So you must know this feed was fitted only on the first models. After that, it was replaced by a different type of feed and I will leave a photo of that type of feed on the screen. Now returning to our fountain pen, at the end of the barrel, let's zoom, we have this OM oblique medium, it stands for the top of the nib, a beautiful, beautiful gold nib, as you can see, let's, let me show it to you. So we have Mont Blanc, 14 carats, Mont Blanc, and I think 585, yes. So the top of the nib is an oblique medium. I don't know if you are familiar with oblique nibs made in Germany, but if you try one, you will be uh, surprised. Uh, first of all, when I started uh, this hobby in 2017, I loved the broad nibs. But when I discovered my first oblique nib, I fell in love with it. And now, whenever I see a vintage uh, fountain pen, especially a German fountain pen with an oblique nib, I will buy it. <laughs> Let's return to our beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. So it comes in this classic 1950s torpedo shape. This model is famous for its um, reliability and it has a certain perfection in its uh, simplicity. And uh, that perfection reflects both in the simple design but uh, also in its functionality. It is quite important for its performance and reliability. And uh, you can see that uh, this particular example has uh, stood the test of time quite, quite well. No uh, scratches, 
of course visible signs of use and this phantom pen was regularly posted and you can see it left some marks here but it is in immaculate immaculate condition as you can see it is a piston filler but specific to the 1950s the piston has brass components and if i turn around the, the end of the barrel we can see through the ink window let's give it a zoom yes we can see through the ink window the cork is not a wood cork but it's a silicon cork the first type of this particular cork used in the 1950s so like i told you because of the cork because of the logo on the cap i believe that this is a second generation of the 342 model and i presume it is from 1954 or 1950 five as long as i'm on this point let me compare it with the superior model let's call it superior model because it was priced higher than our model okay let's put them side by side you can see that the, the 254 model it is slightly bigger than our model uh, it has also the uh, ring of the clip is thicker on the superior model and also the clip is in a way different interesting now we see only one ring on the 342 on the 254 two rings and let me add our model of meisterstuck it has three rings all three of them have this ivory ivory patina and let me show you sorry i want to show you the model from 1983 so in comparison with the model from 1983 you can see the discoloration of the casein material so they all have screwed in caps let's put this here the second one here oh i'm sorry so no our model um our model 342 has a screwing cap 254 has a um, pressure fit cap and the meisterstuck has a screwing cap okay now i want to show you their names and let me zoom on them and you can see the beautiful beautiful gold nibs on the superior model the meisterstuck we have the two-toned 14 carat nib the first one is an f nib the second one is an oblique medium and uh, the third one is also an oblique medium and you can see this over here so we have 146 okay and f this is an f okay the second one i'm sorry it's an m not an oblique medium it's a simple m and the third one is an oblique medium so quite quite an interesting comparison with uh, from uh, different types of um, mont blancs from the 1950s and stay tuned because um, i will do a special episode on uh, the mont blancs from the 1950s in uh, my collection you will see what were the available types from uh, that period and because this is an early model intended for school use those 342 i have prepared i believe it's here yes here so here i have another fountain pen which is interesting to do a comparison because there were intended and the monterosa came out also in the approximately 1955 i'm not so sure let me 
show it to you. So it's uh, on the barrel. It is thermically imprinted Mont Blanc Monterosa. We don't have the logo of the Mont Blanc on the cap. We have this interesting band, ring band, that has those um, mountains. You can see beautiful, beautiful. And this is the Monte Rosa. The screwing cap, and let's compare it with the, our 342. Let's look at both of them. Okay. Yes. So on the top we have the Mont Blanc and down the Monte Rosa. You must know that the Monte Rosa is uh, the model 042G. G stands for its gold nib. So the Monte Rosa, because they were student fountain pens, they were most common in a steel nib. But we have here the lux luxury version, let's call it a luxury version, equipped with the gold nib. Okay, let's put them side by side. And you can see they are both, uh, both quite, quite um, not identical. As I told you, uh, the next evolution of the feed was this feed. And uh, you can see it's quite different from uh, our ski slopes type feed. And uh, I want to check out if uh, we can see. Yes, it is equipped also with a silicon uh, cork. And not much uh, more differences between them. And in fact, I will leave the dimensions of our 342 on the screen. And next to it, I will leave the dimensions of the Monte Rosa. And it's just a curiosity for you guys to see they are quite, quite, quite similar. Similar, similar. And maybe I will uh, find a catalog to see how they were priced um, and uh, to see if uh, there, re there are similarities on their price. But uh, it would be tri uh, difficult because this is the 042G with the gold nib and I hope I will find the version with the gold nib because the price is relevant and you know that um, there are quite uh, d d significant differences between the models equipped with a simple steel nib and ones equipped with a solid gold nib. Okay, so guys, I will leave now the dimensions of both of these uh, fountain pens. And uh, why not? Uh, they will appear on the same uh, slide. So um, first of all, it would be the 342 and then the Monterosa 042G. Okay, and then we will be ready for the writing sample. And uh, for the writing sample, because I have this clear, clear window, I will use a light colored uh, ink. And I think that uh, the Pelican would be a nice, nice uh, choice. And here we, I have the vintage Pelican 4001 green one, brilliant green, a vintage ink from the 1980s. Uh, let's leave the Monterosa aside. Or should I do also... Uh, yes, maybe I will do a writing uh, sample with the Monterosa, this came, comes with, um, this is the number. Unfortunately, I don't know the nib size. So we have an oblique medium and this would be, I hope, a medium. Uh, okay, I will uh, test also this, but um, you can see that the barrel um, has residues of uh, dark blue ink, so um this will would write normally more light and this would be contaminated with the dark blue ink and would write a little bit darker but why not let's test them both in a side by side writing example and why do i do that because there were fountain pens from the same time uh intended for a student use 
And um, if I have both of them with a gold nib, I think it would be an interesting treat uh, for you Mont Blanc lovers out there. Let's turn the piston knob. And as you can see, the silicone. Okay. And now let's draw the ink. Okay. And let's check out to see if the okay oops <laughs> so guys this is the first time this has uh, some strange residue here yuck oh <laughs> got to love those uh, crazy 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 <laughs> vintages look this is like an um, i don't know an algae or something i'm sorry for this guys i will shortly pause the video and i will get rid of this um, i don't know what it is sorry i'm uh, sorry about that guys it appears i have some um, I don't know, something uh, growing in the ink. And I don't know if you notice, but uh, there is, uh, let me show you. There is other stuff growing from it. And um, if I started with this green ink, I will finish with this green ink. But um, I hope that that um, green stuff okay so this is the first one let me see yes the tissue is here so i have a little tissue to remove the excess ink okay now it is clean and as you can notice it is quite full the reservoir let's put this here uh i won't cap it so i will put the cap here and now let's see the Monterosa model. Okay, the same procedure. So, gently turning the knob and now. Yes, we are ready. Where is the, okay. I will also clean this one. It's perfect. So now. Remember to close this. And um, let me change the angle of the camera because I want to, to see. And we will start with our fountain pen. So this is the Monterosa here. And we will start with our fountain pen. Okay. So I have a Mont Blanc 342. And uh, I believe this is from 1955 or approximately 1955. It is. Um, a vintage fountain pen made in Germany, made in Germany. It has, uh, it comes with a gold nib, gold nib, 14 carat, 585. Okay, let me, sorry, I will zoom on it. I'm sorry. Okay, because um, I want to show you the line variations and yes we have some line variation and i hope you can see it a slight uh, i will call it semi flexible nib flexible okay let's check out how juicy it is okay you notice being an oblique medium 
the the lines the variation of the lines okay let's see this is an oblique medium nib it's important for us to to say what the type of nib it is let's um write so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog okay so this was uh, the mont blanc 342 okay let me do the last test of the pressure test so here no pressure and with pressure okay so try to cap it after you've done uh, writing with it to to avoid uh, problems with the ink flow okay let's uh, put this here or maybe here aside because next to it i want to do another mont blanc and this is the mont blanc blanc monte rosa rosa 042 g g for the gold nib also from i believe 1955 or uh, 56 let's call it a 56 uh, you've noticed the difference in the um, uh, ink i i've uh, used the same pelican ink for both of them but this had residues of uh, uh, blue ink so if uh, we have a green here this here it would be a turquoise shade okay this was also made in germany made in germany it was like a sub brand of the mont blanc this also has a gold nib gold nib a 14 carat 585 gold nib and i presume it is an m nib i don't know for sure uh, I'm curious to see the line variations. Yes, also this has a line variation. So also a semi-flexible one. Flexible. Uh, let's see, see the... Wetness. Yes, you notice that the difference between an oblique and this uh, type of nib so the lines here and the lines here are identical here they are different okay so um quite a medium uh, juicy one let's do also the pressure test so starting from no pressure almost no pressure to lots of pressure and again uh, and let's, um, sorry, I will do it right uh, above this for you to have an idea. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And you can see, let's zoom out, you can see both of the writing samples and uh, i've uh, thought about i have uh, an idea i will also do based on this video a comparison between the monte rosa and the mont blanc 342 so guys uh, this was my review of the 342 model i try to compare it with all my mont blancs from uh, that period from the 1950s that are in my collection and um, because i wanted to show you this beautiful beautiful 342 uh, in my opinion this fountain pen has the perfect form factor uh, it has a superb balance it is handy and easy to use um and uh, it is quite a powerful and reliable writing instrument so you got to to hand it to those uh, germans 
that made also entry level fountain pens uh, with uh, the high high level of quality so if you were a student back in those days um, yes it was a costly instrument but uh, you didn't uh, have the power uh, economic power of a lawyer or a doctor to buy a Meister Stug line you bought yourself uh, 342 or a Monterosa with the gold nib or with the steel nib and um, you had yourself a reliable and uh, powerful powerful instrument easy to use easy to clean um, and maybe even even uh, easy to service I'm glad that this fountain pen has made its way to my collection. It is a wonderful, wonderful uh, instrument. And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Hedwig Spallis had a great time with it in the 1950s or in the 1960s. Thank you guys for your time. Uh, I hope that you've learned some uh, new interesting things from this review. If you did and if you enjoyed this review, please subscribe to my channel. You would, uh, it really makes a difference in my activity, your support. Thank you again for your time. I wish you, as always, wherever you are, to have a nice day. Thank you for your time. See you again at the next episode. And bye-bye.